All right. I'm doing it. So, good morning. Welcome to Color All the Things with Melissa. I have Happy Mail. I have pencils. Surprise. The Artzea pencils. So, these are supposed to be... I've heard really good things about them. So I thought I'd give them a try. They're pretty inexpensive at, I think I paid 29 total, including shipping and tax and all that fun stuff. So there are, are 72 pencils. Um, the tin's nice, the, the lid's attached. So, but the order of the pencils in each of the layers is funky and I don't like it because now what I'm going to have to do is go through and find each of the order, the colors in order. So I've already taken my sketchbook and, and written everything out. I got a new, these are my favorite now, this is 202 slot. Um, pencil case. I will be putting my Art Zayas and my Blix and maybe something else. I don't know if I have something else to go in here. But my Art Zayas is definitely maybe my Pro Colors. Maybe my Blix. If I can fit three. Can I fit three? 72 sets in here? Because if so, I might just get rid of my artist. 72 times 3 is 216. No! Excellent. Way to go. Alright. Oh well. I could probably slip it in there, but I won't push it. So, anyway. It's cute. I like it. It's very pretty. So, that's what I will be putting my pencils in. That's what I do when I gotta get around that part to slip in here. I just bend it down. It works out pretty well. So that way I'm not like fighting with the this part and then I just flip it back over when I need to close it. So I have my sketchbook. I have my my swatch book, not my sketchbook. So I've already written them all out. So they're all good to go. I'll zoom in here. And we'll just get to swatching them. This is pretty meh paper. I don't like it. Um, the Lyras didn't work too well on it. The Polys were okay. Prismas are pretty much okay on anything. Um, Black Widows worked okay on them. The Pro Colors worked out good. But I think Pro Color is like a more toothy paper. And that's what this is. This is a toothier paper. So just to give you an idea of the paper and how it looks with different. So that was my open stock blick. Oh, have I put in my regular blick? I don't know. Ergo softs. I did. I put in my regular blicks. So just to give you an idea. Those are the whole binds. What the paper is like. So when you see the stuff go down. Alright, now I have to find the white. That's what I'm starting off with. There it is. So you can see on the pencil it does have. Um, white is not the good one to do that with. Let's see, let's do the pewter. So you can see it's got the name, the number, and I'm pretty sure that's light fastness. Those are pluses. Um, I haven't looked into that a whole lot. It's got silver writing on every single pencil. So even on the white, that's a little harder to see. But silver writing, it's got the double thing and 
it's capped so you can't see like the placement but geez that's uh that's quite a lead in there that's quite a big lead so that's exciting so i'm gonna zoom in i'm not I'm not sharpening any of these when i do my swatches i don't sharpen them i only sharpen when i use them so that's that's as far as it's gonna zoom so let's get to you're not going to see anything on the white. It never does, but I like doing it just in case it's a really, really opaque white. I can actually see it. Um, you guys probably cannot, but I can. I can see it on the page, which means it's probably... Let's see. Let's get something here. An opaque white? No, not really. That's on Luminance. So, not really. We'll have to play with it. So, what comes after ivory? Turmeric. No. Oh. I am about as silly as I can get. The white was right here. Ivory. Which is a yellow. Will it go over it? It will. And I just fade it out. All right, so ivory. Where's turmeric? See, this is gonna be the. There's turmeric. This is gonna be the problem trying to find them all. So then turmeric. They are pretty smooth. Not using a whole lot of pencil to get some decent color. Let's see, what's next? Lemon. I saw lemon over here. So then we're going to do lemon, which has the three. I'm assuming that's light fastness. I'll double check on the back of the tin when we're done here. That's a bright, bright yellow. Pumpkin. I'm not entirely sure why they put their pencils in this color order. That's not our kid crying, is it? I don't know if it was like a hurt cry. I know. It's very hard to tell. There's yellow ochre. Kids are out playing. So yellow ochre. Everybody okay out here? So you can see the the barrel doesn't quite match the color. The barrel's a little darker. But the pencil lead I think matches fairly well. So that's good. Sunflower. Was she being a good girl? <laughs> so, sunflower, it's Sunday. The kids are out playing with the neighbor kids. So, it's going to be one of those days. Tuscan Sun. Now, these have some really nice names. But part of me wants some sort of like actual naming convention, you know? Like, this would be, what is it, pumpkin? Mineral orange? Oh, uh oh. Melissa? Yeah. Oh, well, that little interruption's done. All right, uh, Tuscan Sun. So feeling these, these are small. Um, do I have, let's see. Let's see if I can't get my little earth, earth green. Yeah, the polychromos are larger. Not by much, just a little. Um, let's see. Poor little earth green. 
uh, they're just a hair smaller than the Prismacolor too. Not by much, just a hair. And then obviously, the Luminance is like twice its size. <laughs> So it's just a just a touch smaller than uh, than polychromos, but it doesn't feel bad in the hand. Go apologize to your sister. Okay. We have begun the hitting and kicking portion of the summer early. Honey, honey, honey. Do, 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 do. Sugar, sugar. All right, so honey, these are kind of, oh, I don't like this one. I expected more color, but it's very, like that's it. This one seems less pigmented. Camel. Where did I see camel? Right down here. Camel. Um, so they they feel a little waxy, um, but very smooth. So very smooth, waxy. Not quite Prismacolor soft. A little softer than Polychromos, um, a little harder than Holbein's. What else can I compare it to? Um, way harder than Luminance. Uh, let's see, I've got the Derwent drawing. You can see the Derwent drawings super big too. Um, these are super soft pencils. Not as waxy feeling as Prismacolors. So this is orange, bright, bright orange. Blood orange. Where am I gonna find that? There it is. Blood Orange. I kind of like their names. I mean, they're kind of cute and different. But then they're different. And I'm, I'm really one for naming conventions. And I, th I really think that if there should be universal names for pencils, if they contain X type of pigment, pigment like, um, like in watercolors, you know, you have the, the pigment ingredients, and then you have the name. And I really think that anything with X pigment ingredients should all come with the same name. It just makes it easier. Rose red. My opinion. I'm, I know that'll never happen. But I'm sure somebody's got like a proprietary whatever on a name. But I can hope. So I'm terrible because every time I think of a color, like if I think if I think of a yellow ochre, I always think of polychromos' yellow ochre. Carmine. Let's see, where is carmine? It's carmine red. Where's just carmine? Oh, no, carmine red. That's what I need. So everything having different names or you know is this yellow ochre the same as a Prismacolor's yellow ochre is it the same as polychromos yellow ochre like I need to know these things so there should be like naming conventions or or something around the pigments crimson now a little more pinky pinky red I, mean, I don't have to press tear I mean I'm pressing hard but I don't have to like kill myself to get 
that deep color magenta now the outside of this barrel has like a Tuscan red look to it let's see what the pigment is oh the pigments purpley pinky pinky red so look at that crimson and magenta look almost exactly like almost exactly that's annoying it's a little different on the video but in life they look almost identical yeah that's no good plum 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 some purples that's UBE My wrist hurts. What did you do to your wrist? I don't know. Are you going to be okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I have something to eat? You smell like oranges. Didn't you have oranges? Mm -hmm. I'm still hungry. Oh, you're always still hungry. You can have an apple. I don't want an apple. You can have an orange. You can have a pear? Or not a pear. You can have a plum. Plum? There's fruit punch. Yeah. Yes. Right. The Plum. This was not the color I was looking for. I was looking for a purple. I was not looking for a pink. <laughs> That's a purpley pink though. Can... No, you can I'm not cutting up the honey mango. Can I just eat it plain? You're not supposed to eat the skin, I don't think. Okay. Not the mangoes. I'll have to cut those up for you. There's nectarine. There's plum. There's oranges. I'm trying to think what else. I don't know what else. Eggplant. Hmm. Eggplant. I'm having a hard time. Didn't want there it is. Orange, so I'm him plum. Okay. Eggplant. Kids always so hungry. Eggplant. I like that color. So I like the. They have a nice selection of yellows. Um, the only like bright yellow is the lemon. So I don't know about that. I mean, the rest of these, they all kind of are in the same kind of what I would consider like an ochre family. I and mean, sunflower might be heading towards the yellow orange, but it's not I'm not exactly pleased. Peony. That's oh, fuchsia. There's peony. Holy moly! I was not expecting that. Peony. Bright pink. So why would I go from purple to bright pink? Oh, this is going to take some work. And it could just be this paper, so I may play with it on a paper or on a thing. Pink macaroon. This is a pretty pink. Nice soft, soft pink. I like that name, Pink Macaroon. It's cute. Peaches and cream. This is kind of a fleshy tone. Heading into the fleshy. But there's still a lot of purples there. 
Maybe these are the pinky purples and then they'll go into the bluey purples. Peaches and cream. Marmalade, which looks like an apricot actually. Well, no, there's an apricot, huh? Marmalade. Another fleshy tone. Let's see, where's apricot? I bet you're in here. There you are. Apricot. Kind of reminds me of the Luminance apricot that I was just using. Though the Luminance one was much brighter. It's good to have some fleshy tones in the 72 set. Fuchsia. So I got some pinkies over here, so I don't know what. What is going on? Fuchsia. I don't like the way they've got these all set up. I always wonder how they, they do this. Like the polychromos are set up almost perfect. <laughs> but I'm used to them. That's my problem. Fruit Punch. Another cute name. Some like really bright colors here for those of you that really dig like um, neons and really bright pinks and purples. This might be a good set. I'm not looking to use this set exclusively by itself. This is going to be a I need a purple like this purple you don't find very often. So like, I might flip it in with some stuff. Flamingo. Thank goodness it's a pink. I'd be so mad if it wasn't. Okay. What about that color? Screams that. Like that. The barrel color. I expected like a neon pink. This is not neon pink. But it is a flamingo color, but still. But the pencil lead looks matches, but not that barrel color is way off. Way, way, way off. Coral. I've had need of a coral y color. That's orange. Mm, I guess that's kind of coral like. A little more on the orangey side, but. The touch of pink, I suppose. You'd use a, you'd use fuchsia or flamingo to really knock up the pink of that. Purple iris. Now we're getting to the bluey purples. Like, I don't, this section right here, I don't understand why it was all together. Oh well. Oh well. Oob. Ub. Ube. Hun. Ube. Oob or Ub. He may have his headsets on. Ube. I don't know what Oob. Ub. That's a nifty color. That looks like a smalt blue or um. Oh lordy. All right. Oh, I guess there isn't a equivalent like Delft. I was thinking Delft blue, but not quite. Huh. Interesting. But like, uh, Derwent has a Delft blue. I have the pro colors. I do. Somewhere in here. They have a Delft blue. Blue violet. That's what I would consider that. They don't have the Delft blue. In the... Yeah, they do. It's right there. So, blue violet is what I would consider that. Ube. Ube. 
oob. It's a pretty color though. I like that. Lilac. There are some pretty gorgeous colors in this set. Despite some of the mismatching uh, barrel colors. There are some very pretty colors. I will give them that. And the pencils feel nice. I mean, you can't, you can't really go wrong with 20, what, 29 US lavender? 29 US for a set of 72 with some really pretty colors in them. And really, you can make more colors. You can always make more colors. So let's go over here. We're slipping amethyst. Hmm. And back in this one. There we go. Amethyst. We're still in the purples. That's a pretty purple. I think this would be a very good set for flowers. I think this would be a very good set to color flowers with. Blueberry. Oh, that's a pretty color. That's very blueberry-ish. Actually named. I like it. Yeah, I could totally see. Maybe I will, after I'm done swatching, maybe I will grab like Twilight Garden or something from Maria Troll and, and do something. Ultramarine. I'll do something with these. Just a little. A little something. See how they work. See how they blend. Not a big page. Just, just a few here and there. Try out some colors. Peacock blue. I think that would be fun. I think that would be super fun. There's periwinkle. There's peacock blue. Oh wow. That's super bright. I like that color. I like that color. See, ultramarine is one of those names that is a universal name like when you think ultramarine you think this color no matter what you're looking at no matter what medium even you're in when you see the word ultramarine you know what color you're going for and that's what I'm talking about naming conventions um, periwinkle That's pretty. Nice and soft. But I don't think Peacock Blue belongs between Ultramarine and Periwinkle. I don't, I don't, I don't. Aegean Blue. Nope. Nope. Those are greens. Are you a GM Blue? You are a GM Blue. Oh boy. That's pretty. Kind of reminds me of the night green for my Lyra's. I find it funny they named it a GM Blue. Robin's Egg Blue. Let's see, they've got these all weird. I don't know why they decided that this was that's a beautiful blue, though. I don't know why they decided this was the way they wanted it. Oh, well. It is what it is. Now, this is a fun one. Myconos blue. Myconos. Is that an island somewhere? Oh. Be still my heart. These three right here. Oh. I love it. 
indigo and indigo is another one that when you you hear the word you know what you're thinking of and this is not it it's too light for indigo i really prefer the dark indigo well they do call it dark indigo of the polychromos that's okay turquoise Turquoise. Heading into the greens now. Oh, that's a pretty color. That reminds me of the light green in uh, Prismas. I like that color. Ocean blue. Oh, I'm not done with blues yet. So I um, have a feeling this is green. It is. blues in this set. Not a lot of blues. So some people may find that to be a shortcoming. Yellow sapphire, which I'm thinking is like a chartreuse. A yellow chartreuse. So there's another bright yellow. So there's that. Lime. Put the lime in the coconut. Lime. Just again, there's a chartreuse. When I say chartreuse, I'm thinking of the uh, Prismacolor chartreuse. Somewhere between chartreuse and lime peel. Oh, incoming. Mommy. Yes, pumpkin pie. Do you have a freeze pop? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. Okay. You guys have been eating fruit until your eyes are popping. You can wait on something else to eat. Pear. Pear. Which is lime peel. In the Prisma colors. I like it though. Absinthe green. Incoming. Mommy, but the are in them. <sighs> hungry, hungry hippos. All right, so that was the absinthe green. I, I realized that it was out of screen, but that's a really pretty color. Uh, spring green. Really bright, really fun. I prefer the more olivey greens versus these really bright yellow greens. But that's my preference. Let's see, matcha. That's a tea. It's not matcha, it's not matcha. You're not. You're not. There it is. Matcha. Oh, that's a nice green. Oh, I like that. You can do some nice stuff with that. Instead of the Maria Troll, I could do Joanna Basford. Mint. Mint. Ooh, that's a neon green. No, I'll do the Maria Troll. Just to see. Because it'd be so fun. Let's see. Emerald. I'm pretty sure I saw it on this one. There it is. Emerald. I'll say when I was writing all these out, they seem to have quite a few greens. It's a nice, pretty green. Which again, lends itself to 
a lot of uh, florally, naturey type colors. Basil. Basil. Oh, that's a nice green too. I like that. saw you over here. I saw you. Fern. It's a little difficult to get down. Some of these, the pigment is so odd. It almost feels hard to put it down. I don't know what that means. Sage. Oh, that's a pretty gray green. I like that. Jade, which I saw here. Oh, that's a very, very intense green. Shamrock green. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's over here, but I feel like it should almost be over here with the turquoise. And if you look at the numbers, they're not going in order. So I don't know what the deal is. Moss. That's a nice olivey green. I'd go good with the matcha and the absinthe. Get the moss, matcha, and absinthe together. That'd be a nice, pretty leaf. That's my idea of a good time. Forest green. We're not out of the woods yet. Ah, oh, I'm so funny. Forest green. It's like a true green, just a flat out green between it and basil, I think. I think those two would look good together. Coyote. Yes, I'm actually looking for something called coyote. There it is. Believe it or not, it's actually a green. Oh Lord, I got crying. This is just going to be what my, my uh, summer's going to be like. Lots of screaming and yelling and crying and arguing. Coyote. Kind of like an olivey brown. It's a nice brown color. Tree bark color. Burnt ochre. Another one. Kind of think of the same color. I'm pretty sure I have burnt ochre. Is it right here? Yes, I have burnt ochre for the polychromos. So we can actually like see here. So this is the Art Zaya. And this is the polychromos. So a little different. Not too much. There's a little, this is a little yellower, this is a little redder, but still in the same family. Burnt ochre. Sienna brown. Near in the end. It's a nice brown, nice ruddy brown. Kind of reminds me of Kaput Mortum. Kaput. Garnet. You know what? I'm gonna have to pop some of these. It's getting odd. And three trays. There we go. Garnet. It's 
written the ready browns, the bricks and the all those colors. It's garnet. Cinnamon. And polychromos has a cinnamon, but it is not this color. But this is more true to cinnamon than I think the polychromos is. So, take it with a grain of sand passion fruit. Never actually seen a, a real life passion fruit, so I don't know if this is a true color or not. Kind of reminds me of a, almost like an Indian red type thing. Brick red. Uh, let's see, we're heading into the deeper brown, so we're going to dark chocolate. I bet you're dark chocolate. You are. Dark chocolate. Nice dark brown. Good for some shadows. Coco. Another nice brown, a little on the greener side, I think. Bit of a more yellowy, yellowy brown, whereas that's a ready brown. Noir. So I'm pretty sure this is the black. Yep, yep, yep. Noir, and then our white. No, it's not really doing anything. And then elephant gray. Really wish they would have gone with cold and warm grays, but we'll see what this is. This looks like a warm gray. Space gray. This looks cold, so it looks like we're going to flip back and forth between the warm and the cold. Don't like that, but so be it. Smoke. Yep, we're flipping back and forth between the warm and the cold, it looks like. Maybe. Unless they're doing like blue, French, and cold. Pewter. Pewter. Seems on the warmer side of grays. Charcoal. Nice, uh, almost like a Payne's gray. And then espresso. And that's the end of it. Last one. Why it's down here by the grays, I have no idea. Seems so weird. So, let's see, can I fit? There we go. So there we go. Those are the swatch for the Artzea pencils. 72. Um, let me zoom out here. So my impressions are good lay down. Some very, very nice colors very pretty colors lots of greens some good blues a lot of good pinks and purples um, some flesh tones I'm not entirely happy with the yellows or the reds um, you get like one or two true reds you get a red orange like a vermilion then you get an orange and you get some you get a pair of pinky reds 
that look almost identical. So I'm not, like this row, I'm not entirely pleased with. Everything else I'm fairly happy with. The browns could use some work, um, but you can always pull in different sets. Um, my idea is to actually stick the blicks in with them. Where's my blight? There they are. The blicks in with them. Um, they have a little better uh, red selection in my opinion. Um, the yellows are a little more fleshed out. Um, and they have a few more, well, they have kind of the same browns. They have more grays, that's for sure. Um, but I find their greens to be lacking. In, in the greens, I tend to like. Um, but their blues are pretty, pretty fleshed out, too. So I'll go stick those two together in the same case. Um, I will do um, a Maria Troll page. So I'm going to pause this and grab my book oops pick a page and then um let's see what happens i'll try coloring a little bit just to see how it feels on the paper um because like i said this is not the best paper at all it's pretty crappy it's very very um toothy paper and the maria troll is very smooth paper so for being crap paper these went on very well they went very smooth, but I want to try it on a different paper just to see how it feels. So I'm going to pause and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have picked a page. I picked something very simple, but with enough elements that I feel like I could really get um, some good stuff out of it. So this is out of the Twilight Garden book by Mar Maria Troll. Um, so typically I've been doing um, watercolor in here and I did some erogetons, some neos. So I've done, I've done a few things. Um, I did not like the way the Prisma colors came on here, but we'll see how this does. Um, so let's start. I want like a red brick roof. So let's start with Sienna Brown and uh, Passion Fruit. So let me grab these two. I'm going to get my little sharpener here. I'm going to use my, because the leads are so thick, I will not be using um, my hand crank. I would worry that the tips would be too easily broken because it is not quite the hard lead like the polychromos. So I'm just going to use my m &R sharpener in the small hole and get a nice decent sharpen out of that. Try not to hit everything. This is right where all my wires and stuff are so oopsie I did it I hit it I'm not going to color the whole picture I'm just going to color a little bit um, I probably will finish it up off camera um, but I just want to get a sense of of these pencils so the darker one is the sienna brown um, and then I also pulled in this one. So I want to do like a, a red red roof. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Right there. Perfect. So I'm going to go in with the darker. And let's just see how these blend out. Now I've heard really good things about these. It does take a little pressure to get that dark in there, but not too bad. They blend together pretty well, I will say. I'm not really seeing 
And then I left a harsh line in some spots. I'm not really seeing it. So that's good. Somebody was saying, I think it was Rika Colors on Instagram, said that they like taking the full blender with these really blend it all together and it does look nice it's really kind of small so let's actually go so we're going to do shadow from the top since you have all that big bush so we're going to do the sienna brown Then we're going to take the passion fruit over top. Just do simple blends, not not anything fancy, not too much, not too crazy. That blended pretty good. I want to take the white here and just see. Let's go back with the sienna brown. A little darker passion fruit. I'm gonna grab the white. I'm not gonna sharpen it at all. I just want to see something here. Is the white just a blender? Kind of is. No, well, the white doesn't do a whole lot. So if you were curious. But I got a decent color lay down. If I really wanted to go a little darker, I might actually take the dark chocolate. I will have to sharpen this. That's going to be the only bad part is I'm going to have to sharpen every pencil as I go. dark chocolate just for an added punch of shadow here. I'm almost at my layering where it's not going to take it anymore. We're not going to take it. No, we're not going to take it. Um, sorry. It's almost where it's not going to take any more pigment from the pencil. Um, I did have to push down pretty hard on the chocolate, the dark chocolate, but there you go. I think that, I think personally that came out really well. Um, I'm going to go over with the full blender just to see what it does. It kind of punches that color a little bit, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Let's try. I did the dark last. Let's try the dark first. So let's try it this way. I'm not going to go all the way to that edge. I just want it right in here. So we're going to try that dark first then feather it out a little bit. We're going to go in with the Sienna Brown, which is the next darkest. And let's just see here what it decides to do. Kind of go down a little bit. And then we're going to go in with the passion fruit. I am inadvertently giving fairly medium pressure. I didn't mean to, but I did anyway. Um, that wasn't actually intentional. Um, because it is, like, once these build up, it is very waxy. You can feel the wax, um, and I'm sure at some point you'll actually start feel, seeing a wax bloom. Um, I'm just flipping back and forth here to get the, the colors right. Um, I have a feeling you'll get a wax bloom here. Also, um, they are very waxy. 
somewhat resistant, but the, not like... Even after putting on the full blender, I can go back over this and, and get a little more passion fruit on there. So I'm going to not get the white. I'm just going to leave that light like that. And then I'm going to take the full blender and see if it will give me that light effect without needing the white. It did. So there's that. That's actually pretty dang good. I'm actually really happy with that. So let me put these away. If I can remember which way they go. Passion fruit goes next to cinnamon, sienna brown right there, and dark chocolate and fennel cocoa. Okay. So now let's do oh, let's do that pretty pretty purple. That oob ube with a lap ube. Let's do that nice bluey purple. Let's see, you can't see that. So I'm going to get the ube, and then I might actually get, um, let's see, if I get the ube, I'm, I'm just going to get purple iris and ube, I think. Just keep it simple, just those two. So purple iris, there's ube and purple iris, right next to each other. Perfect. Get these a sharpen. Oh, I've got a kid incoming. Oh, it's always something with kids, isn't it? So that's the purple iris sharpened. Let's do the ube. I'm probably going to do... I'll do those with the flamingo. I know which ones I'm going to do with the U. I know. Alright, let's put that away. Let's put that away. Um, let us actually... I'm sure this may like knee-jerk. What are you doing? I'm grabbing the noir, the black. Trust me. Trust me, she said conspiratorially. Trust me. We're done. <laughs> what else? So if nobody does, um, you should totally check out Passionista Colorista on Instagram. She does this really cool podcast where she interviews colorists. And uh, she did one on um, uh, Ojiki, P Ojiki Pop Art, OJKI Pop Art. Um, and she's a, she does all these beautiful things, but she uses a ton of black. And when um, the lady was interviewing her, she was like, how do you... How do you do that? Like, because everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't use black. And she goes, no, you should embrace it. Because that's how you get that high contrast. So I've started incorporating more black into my work. Um, just bits and pieces here and there because I'm not like, oh, here's the black, you know. Like, I'll come in and just, oh, there's some black. <laughs> I'm not quite, you know. Not quite there yet. So I want to do these little guys here. So I'm going to, on one, I'm going to start light to dark. And then another one I'll do dark to light. Because there are some pencils where um, I have found that going dark to light gives an entire different effect than going light to dark. Now here, you can see it's not too much of a difference. I can see the difference like this has more passion fruit than this one does but um, on screen you're not going to see too much of a difference um, so that will also help me decide what look I'm going for if I know what look I'm going for I know which way I want to do it so if I want to do light to dark or dark to light 
and knowing that will help greatly in achieving a uniform look as well throughout your piece because now this doesn't look uniform to me only because it's different to my eye versus yours um, so now that doesn't look uniform to me and it's not you know whatever this is just a test piece but this will give you an idea so we're going in with the oob so pretty just a nice light layer Then we're going to go in with the purple iris. Not too terribly far. Oh boy, we got screaming again. Oh, Zoe went to go kiss the neighbor boy and he flipped. Anyway, so that was purple iris. Now I'm going to take the noir, the black, just a touch right down in here. So I'm going to go back over it, the purple iris, and really blend that black out. We don't want it to be too intense. Just enough to, to darken it. Um, I'm going to bring you guys down just a little bit. There you go. Maybe you can see that a little better. Go back in with a touch more black. Just right around the edge. A little more purple iris. Blend it out. And then the oob. Go over everything. Even a little titch of white at the top. I think that'll look pretty. So, now I'm going to go over it with the full blender. It seems to punch those colors just a touch. So, this was light to dark. Now, the one next to it, I'm going to go dark to light. So, there's the black. Feather it out. I'm going to go purple iris. And the problem with dark to light is you've put down your dark colors and that's that. I, they're down. They're it. That's, there's no like fudging with it. There's no oob. There's no messing with any of it. Like it's there. You can't can't change that. You can erase it, but it's still going to like, you're still going to see it a little bit. So I prefer going light to dark just for the ability to change things as I go. If you notice, I'm constantly like shifting where my colors are. Um, the purple iris on initial put down, I don't put it as far up as I want it. Or as I think it should be because I gauge after I have everything down and then I can play with it so um, you know, there may not be much difference on this one even from my visual standpoint um, certainly went down a little faster so that's something to keep in mind but as far as which one's better, there doesn't really seem to be a difference with these pencils. I dig this color combo. And you know what? When I dig a color combo, it goes in my book. So, so that was the whole buying colors. We're going to go over here. We're going to write down Artzea. Color combos. And then we're going to do. Let's see, it was noir. And purple. 
purple iris. Oob. That is, sorry you didn't see that, that is my color combo, so it's going to be Noir, um, Purple, Iris, and Oob. I'll have to flag that. There we go. So I'm thinking, let's zoom back out here. I'm pretty happy with the art Zayas, I have to say. Um, they're different, absolutely. Uh, the colors are a little odd, sure. Um, but they go down so nice. I mean, they go down so pretty. That's really pretty. It's some really intense colors. Um, you've got some really pretty colors. So, as a budget pencil, yeah, I'd recommend them. Um, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna have to finish this though. But, oh, pausing for a sneeze. Sorry, my sneezes have been like really loud lately, so I didn't want to like bust your eardrums with that. Um, let me finish this page. It might be cute. I'll have to try that. Um, but I dig these pencils. I think I think for twenty nine dollars, you really can't go wrong. Um, so that's that's my thoughts. I did did my color swatch, I did a little coloring. I hope this helped anybody who's looking at the Art Zaya pencils. Um, and y'all have a great day. Bye.